Yesterday, we talked about how Google looks at the press release. Today, I want to give you a dirty dozen do's and don'ts on how to get media outlets to use your press releases. Come back soon. Colin here, and my company, Smartbox Web Marketing, kicks butt at dental press releases. I've got two former journalists on staff, and I'd put them up against just about anybody when it comes to writing effective, eye-catching press releases that also are going to boost the SEO on your website. I asked them a couple weeks ago to put together their thoughts of what makes a great press release to someone that stands out in the media business. Now first, let me give you the same caveat that they gave me. Different markets act differently. So if you live in a small community and have a small weekly or even a non-daily newspaper, there's a good chance that you can get your press release into that publication and on its website. If you live in a major metro area, you're going to have a tougher time battling to get news coverage. To increase your chances, here are 12 tips of what you should do and not do to increase your likelihood of getting media coverage. First, send it to the right people at the right media outlets. Sure, you can send a blanket release to everybody to a generic email box, fax number, or address of every media outlet in the country. Or you can do a little bit of research and find that local business reporter, medical reporter, or whichever topic is best as it relates to the release you're trying to put out. Second, understand that you're just one of many people competing for that person's time. Whether it's a blogger, TV reporter, or print journalist, other businesses are doing the same thing. Be sure that your press release gets right to the point and clearly states why it's so important about what's happening. Third, connect with the person you want to do your story on social media. Use multiple channels to get that person's attention. Fourth, do a face-to-face -face meeting if possible. It's even better than a phone call, better than social media, and better than an email, and far better than fax or a letter. Fifth, present yourself as a resource for future stories. Don't just give your pitch about your new building or new training or new equipment. Give topics about which you could be an expert source should the need arise. Sixth, keep trying. Your first 10 press releases may never result in a story, but it only takes one that turns into a nice article or segment to keep reaping the rewards. I did a cute podcast earlier this year on Abraham Lincoln. Great story. Number seven. Don't send it at the wrong time. If your local health reporter just wrote a story about dental implants, don't send him or her a press release about how great dental implants are. Eight, don't send it to the wrong reporter. Your local business writer may do a short blurb on your new building. Your local crime reporter will not. Nine, don't be upset if you don't hear back. It's okay to follow up on your release, but if the reporter hasn't emailed or called within a day or two of getting your release, you're likely not going to get a reply. 10. Don't threaten to pull advertising or take your story elsewhere if they don't get back to you. You just come across as a self-aggrandizing jackass who isn't going to get any future coverage either. 11. Don't send attachments. Put everything that you need to say in the body of the email. And remember, if the media wants more, they're going to ask you for it. Twelve, don't forget to double check all the names, dates, times, and facts in your release. The first time a media outlet has to run a correction after running your press release will be the last time they run one of your press releases. Thanks for tuning in, and good luck getting some great media coverage in your local market area. Until tomorrow, keep moving forward.